Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spawncast episode 299. Got some people together again because it is once again a pre-recorded show since the, we had Christmas Eve and then seven days later when the next Spawncast would be. It's it's uh, New Year's Eve, so everyone I'm sure out and about doing different things tonight when you're seeing this. We figured we'd do a pre-record for about an hour or so just to have something there for episode 299 since next week will be the big 300, so we'll see what We'll see what Evan has in store with the the shirts and designs that he that he, that he likes. Oh man, they're looking cool, dude. I saw on I saw Twitter, a post. Yeah, on it, they're looking pretty good. <laughs> they're you're, looking cool, Josh. I mean, you're buff, dude, but dang, you're like you're a little bit even buffer than. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to send everyone their own like designs, their own, uh, so they can use it on. Like Sean was like, I'm gonna use that on Tinder. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Whatever works. Whatever works. But uh, we still, I said, we still have people. Hanging out here, talking some games. Let me go around. We have, starting from my left, we got OJ. Player Essence, how we doing, OJ? Doing good. Just hanging out. Thanks for having me. Dev OJ here. We have MVG. MVG Hello. Hello. It's great to be here. Good to have MVG. And we have Max, Streamcast guy. What kind of background is that? You know, I don't know. Uh, I've seen people use this one. It's, I think it's like, it's like a... It's me sitting in a gaming chair with a... Uh, uh, okay. It's like the back game kind of, right? It looks like some type of Five Night at Freddy's shit. You're right, yeah. Game. I'm ready uh, for yeah. like 18 jump scares. I'll just duck down at one point and something will pop up. Uh, so we had, we, we did have Christmas. Everyone have a good good holiday weekend there? Yep. Yeah. Awesome, good. man. Um, getting caught up on the backlog of games. I finished God of War Ragnarok. Great game. I'm on to Horizon now. I've also got Crisis Core and i got Tactics Ogre coming up as well. Oh. So it's been, it's been a good week, man. I'm still playing. So hopefully I'll get it all done by the time uh, New Year rolls around. We'll I, see. I think you're going to like... I think you're going to like Horizon more than God of War. You know, so far, um, I am enjoying it more. And I think, I don't want to say the game was underrated or whatever, because, I mean, it got a lot of, you know, accolades this year. It was in the God of War. It was, sorry, it was in the Game of the Year uh, nominations. But, yeah, I think it kind of got a bit of a raw deal in some ways, because it, 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 it didn't it release the same day as something else that it completely I mean, Elden it. Ring, remember? That was the big... Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. The first one released, yeah, like, man, a week I before mean, Breath of the Wild, and know, this one released right by Elden Ring, so it, it couldn't catch a break. <laughs> I feel like they could have maybe, you know, released it at a different time, because I, I, you know, I think Elden, Ring just, just, Elden Ring just came and ate its lunch, you know? I think yeah. it's doing well, though, Um based off of like not at this point some of the discounts that have been going down you know yeah, i'm hearing yeah. from a couple of my friends in retail that hey at 49.99 49.99 it's moving and i think that you might like it a bit more because the structure i think that like god of war ragnarok has a lot of like kind of puzzles kind of looped in and a lot of things that kind of just yeah. like and then they tell you then they like they they solve them for you half the time where they just say what to do like yeah. Horizon has like this open structure where it's just kind of like cool to just go about and just do whatever the hell you want, like at your pace. So yeah. I think that that might be a little bit liberating after playing a game like God of War mm -hmm. Ragnarok. No, I, OJ, I totally agree. Like, I, I really liked Ragnarok. I think the game was was fantastic, but I will say that it didn't really bring anything. Just say it, new to the table. Just say what it felt like. It's a PS4 <laughs> it game. Feels like Let's a PS4 be honest. Game, yeah, yeah. It does. but what I really loved, and Max, I know you. you I watched your uh, your spoiler video of it oh, after yeah. I beat the yeah. game. Um, the story is incredible, absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like it is some of the best story writing I've I've, I've experienced in a game for a good long time. Too, and that with the, yeah, the cutscenes, the way so they great. intertwine it with the gameplay. Yeah, that's all really good. And that's, and that's really what kind of helped you just let me you know finish the game in the end. It was I just wanted to know where it all went, you know, because I didn't know anything about where the story was going to go and everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you're going to like Horizon because I know you like the Far Cry games like I do. Yeah. I'll go through the Far Cry games. Yeah. There's this Horizon isn't as much of a you can turn your brain off kind of thing as Far Cry is. There's a bit more involvement there. And, and maybe that's because it's technically not a run and gun first person shooter. There's a bit more when it comes to platforming and weapon selection and, and variety and Horizon. But yeah. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Also, I think it's more visually impressive than God of War. Well, you know, uh, Digital Foundry rated it the best graphics of the year. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah so they had uh, they had Horizon as one and Callisto as two. Hmm. I don't remember what the rest were. But so far from what I've seen, man, the graphics are incredible on this thing. Like they're, yeah. they're really, the really good. Robot glow and stuff. Yeah. I think the I yeah. think the characters yeah. that you come into run into and like they their their conversations, they just the facial expressions, the animations, the it, that looked. I was like, oh, okay, this actually looks like a next generation title. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I, I dude, happens. that Decimer engine is is something else. 
Like I can't wait Death to then. Too? I can't Death wait for too? for a Decima game that it runs on next gen hardware exclusively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that. That Pretty could good. be. I think that's going to be the one that sets the bar when it comes to the the visuals of character models again. So. Uh, looking looking forward to that one. Looking forward to that one. But yeah, I'll be curious your take on Horizon Imagery when you get through it. I think it's going to be like f- 45 hours, I think, to beat it. Just th- just running through the story part of it and a couple side mm-hmm. quests here and there. So it's it's a it's a good I think it's a good good sized game. So uh let's see. We did have some we did have some Discord questions here, which we can go through. In fact, we'll start with start with one. This is from Varang who said Oh, this seems like a good one for MBG. Would someone working in software engineering be able to get into some development, or would I have to go back to school for a game dev degree specifically? No, I, I don't think so. Like, I mean, I'm not really an expert on telling you how to choose your path for the game industry because, like, the way that I got in was I, I hacked consoles and I wrote homebrew software for years until I kind of got recognized from my YouTube channel. So that's definitely you know, uh, an outlier. Um, but I don't think you need to go to school to learn about game development, especially if you have a software engineering um, background. I would probably suggest you um, set up your own GitHub page and um, just promote the projects that you're doing, um, you know, to any employers that, that are looking for people because there is an industry shortage of like developers out there. So um, I would just, you know, um, get your GitHub page updated, any kind of cool side projects that you do for fun, hobbies, things like that. Make sure that you, um, you know, you signal boost them as well um, because that's what people are looking for. You know, they want to, you know, they want to see something creative. They want to see something cool that people have done. So um, good luck as well on, on, on that. Hopefully you, you find uh, what you're looking for there. Now, now is good a time as any. Got social media where you can share your stuff and all the engines. I mean, you can just, download unreal engine and play around with it if you want yep. like there's a lot of a lot of cool things you can do so it is exciting for indie developers coming up now let's 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 go right into the the switch the switch talk here i mm-hmm. i separated this up a little bit because there was talk about a, the switch mid-gen refresh the switch pro then we kind of moved on to a lot of people talking about next gen switch because that kind of seems like where it's heading at this time. So I'll, I'll kind of divide it up between the two. The The switch pro talk came from, well, really got sparked from about a two or three minute segment on digital foundries, DF weekly 92, when John Linneman commented on some uh, internal events that were happening, I guess with certain developers or people that, he seems to have heard from he said, I, I think at one point internally from what I can understand from talking to different developers is that there were, there was some sort of mid gen switch update planned at one point, And that seems to be no longer happening. And thus it's pretty clear that whatever they do next is going to be actual next generation hardware. So it, is this, it is, is the switch pro talk finally dead? Has oh, to be. No, be. <laughs> it's, people are still talking about it, but it's not, no, I mean, it's, I think it'll be dead. I think not at this point, because like now you have a reputable source that says, eh, well, you know, I'll switch pro. So it'll be dead in some, but some people will probably still say there might be something, you know. Mm, but, I, I, yeah. I, w- I was hoping to get Nate's take on this today, but he was unavailable, unfortunately, uh, today to, to go over it. I, he might, I mean, he does his podcast on his Nate the Hate channel. So yeah, I'm sure he, he'll probably do something just going over it since it was such a big, a big topic the other day on Twitter, but I did see, I did see a lot of people who were confused. There were some threads that were in on different forums that were in shambles. <laughs> it, was, it, it was a pretty wild time online after that got put out there, which is funny because John just kind of dropped it very casually. And I feel like if it mm-hmm. wasn't timestamped, people wouldn't have noticed it for maybe a week or two. It would have been a little while. Uh, I, Cause it was just kind of thrown I out. There. I felt I will. I've been saying since early 2021, after we didn't hear anything still at that point and then especially after the switch oled dropped i'm like hey look guys this thing i don't think it's a real thing because if you're going to make a refresh that would be the time to do it it would have been with the oled why why are you going to release an oled then release another refresh and then release a next gen system in concession that just doesn't make any sense it's too far we're too far into it you know even even if it didn't make sense i will admit i was definitely one of those people that was keeping the hope alive i i 100 percent believed in that we were going to get a switch pro at some point <clears throat> mostly just because honestly i thought i don't know i i keep thinking about those switch games that play 540p handheld and stuff and i always thought like man i wish that we had a 
better version of this console, even if it was just a tiny notch up and a tiny push up in, in price tag. So it's it, to me, this whole report, because I made a video on this, I guess I was just blown away by the fact that Nintendo did, according to this, like make it and looked at it and they just realized they probably weren't going to be able to get enough chips to to sell it or something. It's very interesting. I think well, I want to, right? uh, you know, I mean, and the market. So, I mean, yeah. that probably yeah. played a, Especially played a since part. They oh, would yeah. have been trying to get chips in 2020 when things were at their peak in terms of the, the shortage and cost. Yeah. Whereas now, interestingly enough, the shortage is turning into a surplus. So we'll talk about this soon with their next gen, but 2023 actually might end up being a good year for Nintendo to start getting all the logistics in place and ordering yeah, chips stockpiling. 10 months out or something to get all that set up. Funny enough. Go, go to MVG. Uh, I mean, I was just going to agree with you guys for the most part, but like, I want to be clear though, that like, I feel like there's some, there's two different narratives here that number one, the switch pro was ne would ne never existed and it wasn't real. Um, I, I don't agree with that. I think it actually was real. And look, Same. Nintendo has a history of canceling hardware. Th this is not anything, anything new. And you know, they also, they also have a history of bringing out uh, hardware that is uh, more powerful. You know, when we look at the 3DS line and stuff like that, right? So, um, I do think that the Switch Pro was a thing, you know, at, at at a given point in time. But to OJ's point, you're right. I think enough time now has passed where it's like, well, you know, we need to pivot. You know, it's something we 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 can't think about this anymore. We have to think about what what comes next. So, I think for me, I I, I think look, I'm I'm a little um, surprised. I would say that there isn't going to be more powerful Switch hardware, and now whatever is next will be next generation because that really changes things a lot as far as um you know what we what we would expect to see from the next generation of nintendo hardware i'm not saying switch hardware i'm saying mm. nintendo hardware that, so it'll be interesting to see what that looks that's like my, that's kind of my concern is now there's a lot of unknowns necessarily whereas if they were like, oh here's here's the the new nintendo switch it's like okay well obviously it does what my switch does now just better I, yeah all right, Nintendo's kind of a wild card, which we'll go into for next-gen stuff uh, here in a bit. But I kind of feel like, OJ, you're right, when that OLED came out, man, that that took the wind out of a lot of the, the Switch Pro, say, like, the sales for that. Like, people mm -hmm. really, especially, like I said, there there are some forum threads that I, I am surprised how much information they've been able to scrape together where they basically know or at least believe they know what kind of chip is going in the next-gen system just through looking their da databases and all of these different things, right? But they, that OLED was not exactly what anyone was expecting necessarily, uh, yeah. and that that for me. kind of moved on. From <laughs> <laughs> Except for me, when I made a video, I said, "Hey, this thing could be just a slight Game Boy Advance style upgrade where they make a better screen." I think I literally said that. Uh, where they make a better screen, where it's maybe not too much more. Maybe they add some more memory. Like it could be. They also have a history of just making the same thing and then it just being a better model of the same thing or yeah. making a slight modification to how it looks or whatever like a like, like what was it a game boy uh sp mm, right yeah like, or better, I better that screen. Lit up. the psp 2000 to the psp 3000 it yeah. changed the internals it did completely fix the screen though and nintendo 3ds nintendo 2ds <sighs> yes they, they have it they have a history of making some more powerful hardware but more often than not, whenever they do, it's like usually, I mean, sometimes you can, I guess it's debatable how big of a jump it is, like from DS to DSi and all that. Um, well, it's not debatable. It's actually there. But I, I just felt that, no, it's definitely possible that they don't and they opt not to because the sales are there and you're already this far in, this many calendar years in, you're already this far in. I mean, they're I mean, probably when they first, just when they first put the tweet out for switch OLED in the first 20 seconds. I feel like most people looked at it and said, okay, this is it. This is the, this yep. is the switch pro. Let's take a look at the specs. Yep. And then it was like, Oh <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, like, I oh, this is nothing. I agree. I, I was like, Oh, it's kind of real. Then it was like, no, it's not. I'm yeah. like, Oh, okay. That's what well, <laughs> I, this is what I felt they, they might do. They might, I might, I said, like I said, I made that video in March of 2021. So that was well before the OLED came. I was like, hey guys, you need to have, there's going to be some Switch Pro disappointment if you guys are expecting something and it's not up to what you guys are thinking because they can go the exact opposite way. I've been covering Nintendo for freaking almost two decades, it feels like at this point and seeing all the stuff that they do. Wii U had no There's upgrade never been a better time obviously, to get away. You know, With Nintendo a great deal on the Hyundai, not fully you taken always want it. Of. I mean, it's they've done journey. it, but that doesn't mean it's going to be something crazy or something up to what you think, like PlayStation and Xbox. 
Um, I wouldn't expect it. So, I mean, I, I just I, wait, I, I guess the only, the, the only difference I'll say, OJ, is that they struck gold with the Switch, you know? Um, yeah. So... And I'm not saying they didn't with the 3ds. I mean, they killed it with 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 other hardware as well. But you know, this is this is something where I feel like um, they have to be very careful about what their next move is. And and I think you know they made the right call here at the end of the day because yeah, we you could have more powerful hardware, right? With that has more RAM and and faster clocks and stuff, um, and that will alleviate some of the concerns that that developers are having right now. But I think. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a, you know, a stake in the ground that's basically saying you just have to wait for next generation now, you know, whatever comes next so, at this point. So is are we basically now, it seems like a lot of people are kind of in agreement. okay, Nintendo, just based on what we're seeing, I mean, and I think more info will come, like I said, I think Nate eventually will chime in on it, but it sounds like there were plans for it, they decided to pivot, and now we're on a next gen. Are we kind of like we're beyond the the Switch Pro stuff because we're going into the seventh year for the Switch now? We're thinking, all right, they're yeah. I, I mean, okay. I guess okay. My my thought, I and we'll never be able to know. It's all speculation, but I am curious uh, if they had gotten us if they had released this theoretical Switch Pro that that was prototyped or whatever. I'm so curious to see how it would have affected the industry. Um, I have some friends that are like PC only gamers. Uh, they don't play anything on PlayStation. Even if Spider-Man looks great, they waited till it came to steam and stuff because they have like these $5,000 computers and they want to play stuff in the most HD thing possible. And even if they think a Nintendo game looks good, you know, sometimes they'll just bootleg it later on and play it on Yuzu or whatever. I'm kind of mm -hmm. curious how many people would have bought a switch pro just for that tiny bump in power and it's all speculation but i guess that's my biggest thing now is just thinking about like how many people would have jumped on board the switch bandwagon mm. for the first time with the pro mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think those question. pc people would yeah probably just get steam deck and be happy with that and do well, the they, same they have that but i mean yeah. that it's a supplemental of to actually play it because i do i do have friends that like vote with your wallet is important to us kind of thing of like i want to buy the good game so if they could have bought a more powerful switch to play you know, Bayonetta at a steady frame rate, they probably theoretically maybe would have. But the OLEDs are killing it though, right? Like it's selling. Is it? I, I don't, I don't it's know. Selling well. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, the Switch it's... in general, other than the Switch, the Switch Lite, I guess is the weakest of the family, but OLEDs Yeah, the Switch fine. Lite's the weakest. OLED sells the most by far. It, it just sells the most against regular Switch. And then, yeah, Switch Lite is almost, eh, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's there. I mean, it's okay, but it's not really doing as many numbers. But it doesn't seem like Nintendo ships as many as they uh, ship with OLED. OLED gets the most distribution out of all of them because yeah. that's what most people are buying. Um, I, but no, I, I mean, that's I, an interesting I, question, though, Max. Just, just see the split, like, because it would have been more. It would have. They probably would have touched four hundred dollars for that thing. Yeah. If they really went for it, would Nintendo be able to sell a four hundred dollars system on the market? I, yeah, I feel like they would have been able well, to. I, I think, and this is a complete fucking guess I'm pulling out of my ass, I think instead of having the OLED, I think they would have used that OLED screen. Maybe they already had it developed. I think that the the OLED Switch mm. is part of their plans for the Switch Pro. I think it would have okay. been $400, and I think it would have had better graphics and that better I screen. I feel like a lot of people would have moved for that OLED by itself, yeah, exactly. but then they're like, oh, yeah, wow, this also runs games and better, and they lo it looks better. So yeah. that it's a very tangible mm -hmm. difference that you can just see right away. And it's easy to market OLED switch. It's like, Oh, well, I know what that is. That's the premium TV. So it makes sense. This is $400. Uh, so clicks you. Hey, hi guys. Hey, Glick. Good to have you here, Happy Glick. new year. <laughs> Happy new year. Young lady. How's your Christmas? It was good. It was good. It, I actually, for the first time, got to have snow on Christmas. So, Oh, wow. Okay. It was cool. Really, really cool. I know some of you guys are like, Oh, it's, that's old news, but it was just Florida, cold here. From Florida to the Midwest, it's like it was actually really nice. So, uh, this was the yeah. first time I didn't have snow on Christmas, and I love it. We're trading. We're trading climates. Um, <laughs> the Northeast, it's it's like half and half. Sometimes you get snow, other times it's just twenty degrees for no reason. Like to me, if it's gonna be that cold, it might as well snow. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a different cold though than than Florida for mm. sure. Uh, it's it's it's. I don't know. I like putting on layers. Everybody's like, why why are you smiling? Like whenever they find out I'm from Florida, like, why are you smiling? Like, why are you here? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm having fun. The hell has anybody seen Florida? What do you mean, why are you here? Uh, dude, if, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I would take Florida man over how expensive Florida is now. Like, if anybody's listening from Florida, you know how expensive it is. I don't mean to derail the conversation. It's good to oh, see so you guys. We're about to move Happy on from anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, it's good to have a click here. Let's see. We have Shout out to Florida man. <laughs> this is a question from Zoop who says, I'm playing New Vegas for the first time. The game progression is a series of humps to get over and valleys to frolic through. What game has had a hump you simply could not get over? For me, it was recently starting Vampire Survivors and making z oh, zero progress for the first two hours. Really, I feel like that game is immediate when it comes to just rewarding you. Uh, what, what, as a one that comes to mind odd. recently, for some reason, I tried to start a new game of Stardew Valley. And I forgot that your farm is just an absolute desolate wasteland for the first like five hours. And uh, I started playing and I played for about an hour and a half. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> <coughs> it's probably for me, it's probably Assassin's Creed the, with the newest one, Valhalla, where I played for like 40 hours. And then MVG was like, it took me a 89 hours or, so, or 100 <laughs> hours to beat it. And I'm like, well, that's not happening. Where's that's there? just that's the it. campaign. Yeah, that's, that's, just that's, the campaign. that's the hump right there. It's going to take 100 some odd hours of this. <laughs> What were you going to say, MVG? Uh, well, I mean, Mass Effect is a game that I've always had, like, multiple save files at, like, critical parts of the story. Because, like, I never really know which way to go sometimes, right? So I always used to have, like, about 10 save files, you know, um, depending on which way I wanted to get the, the story to go. And I sometimes I was never happy with, like, the choices I made. And I was like, I'm going to load that save up, you know, from, like, five hours mm -hmm. ago and then go the other uh, go the other direction. And then you, you go the, in the other direction and it's like, maybe I like the other direction better. So, you you know, I always had that, like, uh, I guess I wasn't really wanting to, to, you know, go through the story in a certain way. I wanted to do all the Paragon options and all the Renegade options oh. and see how they were going to go. Um, but that's just me. I'm, I'm kind of OCD like that. I, I want to know, like, every branching path in the entire game, you know, if I can. Hmm. Would you say that's more or less beneficial than just playing through it again? It's way less beneficial. Like uh, it's better. It's easy just to play it again and then just pick your path. And it, yeah. it also reminded me of a game like Detroit and Heavy Rain. You know those games, those David yeah. Cage mm -hmm. games where there's like thirty different endings, stuff like that um, as well. I find is is very very tedious because I always want to know you know all the different endings of the game. Did you ever do the? Uh, did you ever knock the reporter out in uh, Mass Effect? Yeah, I did. did you do that? Yeah, I did she's, that. Yeah. She's interviewing you, and the That's way it's right. set up, she gets more and more annoying, and it keeps flashing this <laughs> renegade. Like, do you want to renegade? But you can choose to just renegade right at the start. So she's like, "I'd like to interview you," and you just immediately <laughs> knock her out. For no that he hasn't done I, anything I, I, yet. I, I did that. I did that once. It was hilarious, dude. I she just that. crumples. You like tap her, and she just. Oh, I did it on my Renegade playthrough, <laughs> on my Renegade playthrough. But being a Renegade in Mass Effect, it just—it's so counterintuitive to my own personal like personality. I hate yeah. doing Renegade stuff in Mass Effect. It's also—it's a lot shorter. I found out that most of the time, Renegade really? is stop talking. So there's times where the council is talking to you, and yep. if you press the Renegade button, you just, you just hang up. Him. No, you right. just hang up and oh. miss a whole conversation. <laughs> um, I. Well, I feel like with Mass Effect specifically, it's like sometimes you'll pick a prompt, but it's like different than what you think it's going to be. Yeah. So yep. I don't know. I feel like with Renegade, it's like, oh, what a, what bad thing am I going to do? And then you sock him in the face. It's like, holy shit. <laughs> um, or, you know, you just start blasting. Um, I know OJ's going to get mad at me, bro. I still struggle with Xenoblade 2. I just I'm do. not going to get mad at I you. I just do. <laughs> I just do. People struggle with games, or some people just don't like games. Xenoblade's one of those games where everybody wants to play it, but most people don't actually like Xenoblade. Okay. I think I think that that's if you well, if you're I not enjoyed, into the story and if you're not edition. into the lore, Xenoblade is just not it's not I fun. Enjoyed, I enjoyed you know? the first. I enjoyed the first one like <laughs> substantially. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think for me, I, I I think what I just decided at this point is when I come back to stream and play it is I'm just gonna do it on the easiest and just go through it because story is like my main thing i guess yeah yeah that's better um, so yeah, yeah it's but fine if you didn't like it that's fine it. there's people love you guys all love death stranding i think that game's shit so i mean like it's, <laughs> it's like so it's okay you know Fair, though, i will finish xenoblade chronicles 2 before you finish death stranding so mm. Sounds like a challenge. I, I've already seen everything with Death Stranding, so I've already essentially I've already finished. Watched it. Through I've, I've already watched through it all, so I've already seen seen. I've, I've seen Princess Beach. I'm still I've, I've seen Princess <laughs> Beach. I've seen all the the shitty dialogue that people praise as the best yeah. thing ever. So what I've seen it about, all. What do you think you know? about that Higgs and, and fragile scene? 
I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Death Stranding. I don't give a shit about Death Stranding. I don't like the game at all. I don't like the story. I don't like the characters. And I think that Metal Gear Solid kicks its ass. And I wish that they'd make a new Metal Gear Solid game with Kojima. But my, my you roommate, know? Will, you know? my roommate does not like uh, Death Stranding, but he loves to quote it because he he just like randomly watched all the cutscenes. So the other day, I was walking into the kitchen, and he slowly turned around and he goes, "Do you know why they call me Die Hard Man?" And I was like, "I'm not doing this." <laughs> but for everybody that likes it, likes Death Stranding, that's cool. You know, like <laughs> Death Stranding Two got announced. I didn't troll it at all. I'm like, oh, cool. For those that like Death Stranding, bam, you got a second one coming that out. Trailer. Oh, I it's still haven't seen the trailer. Good. It's good. It's really good. <sighs> you know, so y'all see the link that it looks like Death Stranding Two is slated for 2024. Yeah, that actually sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I see that like October, November 2024, something like that. So still, still a ways off from it. We also nah, have. Yeah, this is this is from Texas Toast who said, "What year in the past decade has been your favorite year for gaming?" I, I'm kind of oh, thinking. I'm kind of thinking 2017. Yeah. 2017 was pretty good. Near Automata was, was Wild, in there, right? right? Horizon Zero, what's that? Re- is that Breath of the Wild? Breath of the Wild yeah. was in there, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yep. Neo, Prey, yeah. Super Mario Odyssey, that. Xenoblade yep. 2, Hellblade was that year. Splatoon yeah. 2. Uh, Splatoon yeah, 2. Yeah, Cuphead came out that year. Cuphead was really yeah. good. Uh, Mass Effect 5. Andromeda. Persona. That almost killed a franchise. Persona yeah. 5 came out. I, mean, that year. Weird, I love 2017 Rising. for the weirdest Rising, reason. Yeah. All the Final Fantasy 15 DLC came out, and I made videos about each of those, and they all blew up. So I, I like uh, 2017. Yeah, Hellblade, Hellblade was, yeah. also came Sonic out. Mania was in there. Sonic Mania was good. The two weeks of I really enjoyed of uh, For Honor that was out. Oh, yeah. There you go. It has like 10 seasons now. Arms? Can't forget about uh, arms, Nate. Where's yes, Nate? Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I played the hell out of arms. I played that game. So, I played that I, game so much. <laughs> I have a video I saved when they because they saved that game like a month early, and so I wasn't sure how much to film. So I actually have like twenty hours of footage of me just sitting in front of my TV punching that it just raw. So I just put it in a video sometimes randomly. I'll just put a picture of me punching at the TV. Oh, I didn't play that way. <laughs> I, just played I, want, I played, played both. I did both. Yeah, it's 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 you get more control over it if you use the if you use the motion controls, but I just don't feel like using the motion controls. So. Oh, I, I look dumb as hell. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Don't I played do that it. game so much I got a sponsorship for it. <laughs> they were like, "We like your arms videos." I was like, "Cool." Pay oh my it. god, Hollow Knight also <laughs> came out in 2017. Yeah, Hollow Knight was that year. Eric, when is the Bloodborne's 2015, right? Metroid Prime 4 was announced in 2017, wasn't it? Well, there, we also had we also had uh, Sam, Samus Returns came out that year, right? Yeah, Samus, Samus Returns. Returns. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was a good that 3DS game. game. It was good. It was good. It was Dark Souls 3. Was that also 2017? That was 20. I feel like that was no. 2016. That was 2016 or 20. That was that was before. It was. Wasn't I think it was the year before, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think so. I wait. I, well, the year after. Check. Double check. Oh. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, we gotta double check. This is 2016, March 24th, 2016. Yeah. Eric asks for YouTubers, how often do you check your analytics? Technically, I, I see them every day when I log in. <laughs> About 100, but... 100 times a day. Yeah, 100 times a <laughs> day. Let's be honest. Yeah, every, you, every YouTuber looks at their analytics as much as they can. Every time a new video, I drop a new video, I'm in there checking the analytics like for the first few yeah. hours. Oh, curiosity, well, I do think either way. I drop a video, I check it after like two hours, and then I'll go to the gym or whatever, and I'll check it again after like four hours, and then I check it like 19 more times after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sometimes I, I I I check it way too much, and I'm like, okay, stop check. It's not going to move like if you check it like three minutes from now. You know? It might right. move. It uh, might move. It, it might move. That's the thing. You never know when it might move, so you got to check. Gotta Here's to so. y'all. Y'all ever have the thing where you randomly get a huge burst of subscribers and you can't figure out why or where? Like no video has gone viral, so you're like, okay, who shouted me out or what happened? I've had that a couple times where mm-hmm. I'm like name searching myself. Like, did Philip DeFranco mention me or something? What the hell? Hmm. <laughs> to me, much. But that did happen to me one time when Beat 'Em Ups gave me a shout out in one of his videos, and all of a sudden it was just like, boom. I'm like, what the hell? And then I just saw, oh no, Beat 'Em Ups mentioned you, and I was like, what? Oh, okay, cool. So shout outs to Beat 'Em Ups. So uh, let's let's move over to the next gen Nintendo system talks. That seems to be where everything's moving now. That the Switch Pro stuff is basically on the back burner or essentially dead. Nintendo is it, well, at least according once again to John Lennon. He's he at least this kind of went into more of the I I think 
or I feel kind of territory where it's more opinion based for this. Not necessarily. I heard this from developers, but he's, he's thinking 2023 is, is not going to see a new switch or any, or new Nintendo hardware at all. And we could be looking at 2024 for the system to, to come out. So I had a few questions about this. We can go over. The first one is, do we get a release date for Metroid prime four or an acknowledgement <laughs> for the new system or we see the new system which one do we get first i think we'll see metroid before the new system you think well we get the release date for metroid prime 4 oh not the release yeah, we date. need the release date like, we'll see i think it's gonna be cross gen like breath of the wild okay okay so you think i mm. i agree i i think next year i mean we have to they have to give us info on metroid prime 4 next year come on it's been it's been so long now like we need we need this game has to be close to completion right i mean Am I am I off here? Like I don't uh, even know. I don't, I don't like, know. They changed their Twitter love banner. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I have some insight into game development. Uh, granted, I'm not a AAA dev, but like, come on, it's been tw- since it's been forever. And I know that they stopped and they, you know, they pivoted and they restarted and everything like that. And maybe you know they should have just gone with retro to begin with. I mean, but yeah, they, that's yeah. all water under the bridge. They have to give us an update on Metroid Prime and a release date next year. It's time. Come on. Come on, Retro. Come on, Nintendo. Let's go. I think wrap it up. Wrap I it think up. it's coming out 2024. I'm available. Earliest. Actually, I'm not I'm not available. Not so available. I, can't. <laughs> I, I actually I like the idea of Metroid Prime 4 being cross gen and being something they launched the new system with. I mean well, what... we believe it's probably gonna with what Retro's history has been <gasps> with their previous releases, it'll probably be something that does show off what the system could do. And that's what I, I made a video talking about the Switch Pro seemingly being canceled and, and deconfirmed for lack of a better word. And at the end of my video, I was saying uh, what I want most when we see the next switch is I hope they do like they show an upgrade. I think in the specific example is I hope they show like tears of the kingdom and how good it looks on switch and be like, and now here's the switch Two version, which you'll get automatically. I don't know. Hmm. I hope, I hope it upgrades stuff. We'll see though. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of think we get both the sort of at the same time. And I almost wonder if they're going to tell us the code name for, cause they, they did it with the, the switch, right? They told us it was the NX like in 2015 and then it took what a year and a half yeah. for them to actually show the system. And then another six to seven months to, to launch it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I also feel that like the NX, even them just talking about it was only because they it was a situation that they were in at the time because the wii u was not doing so well and then they wanted to announce the partnership with mobile so you needed to say something to to, so you don't give the impression that you're just going to go mobile because you're doing so bad you're just doing mobile so i think that they were kind of like roped into announcing it that it felt pretty early to tell us Um, that yeah 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 they they were definitely roped into telling us that early um i don't think that's they don't got to tell us anything at this point they're going to just they're going to let us know when they feel it's ready so uh, this time around yeah i'm just trying to think of like the, yeah. the prediction or the thought process going into it then with do you do you announce it before the holiday season and just say yeah whatever the switch will sell what it sells and then we'll we'll still keep our can they keep their march release schedule or their q1 release that they did with the switch without hurting the switch sales at holiday Maybe I'm crazy here and y'all will disagree, but I think that that uh, E3 next year, uh, they're going to show Nintendo's going to come out and show a bunch of different games and say, like, here's why we're kicking butt in 2022. You guys are already playing Tears of the Kingdom. and You're loving it. But the future of the Switch is coming with the Super Nintendo Switch next year. I think they're just going to I think they're going to be clear and be like, hey, here's the idea. But the way that what they do with the Wii U, where they just showed you the tablet and went, all right, we'll talk more about. Well, games I don't, I don't, and I don't think they're gonna do I don't think well, they're gonna not, do that. Not, not in then showing the hardware, but I mean in that I think they're gonna be very clear of like, hey, the next thing is already in the oven, like all of our great games now, more great games coming. I don't know. I feel like they could talk about yeah. that they're working on something, but not be like, Oh yeah, this is what it is. Here it is. Take a look. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're gonna show the prototype, but I think I I, I don't know. I I get the vibe that they're gonna be since they haven't shown us new hardware in a bit, I think it'd be cool if they came out and said, like, yeah, next gen switch, it's coming. Yeah, I think they're. I think they're gonna do very similar to what they did with the Switch. I think the problem with E3 sometimes that E3 can be convoluted and can, uh, oh, yeah. you know, if you announce something there, you know, um, and I know that they are petrified after announcing the Wii U at E3 and then having <laughs> that situation. So I think they'll probably do what they did with the Switch. They'll just wait till standalone event, the end of the year, and then just say, "Hey, we have an announcement to make about the future of Nintendo 
and then I think they're gonna follow the steps. I I I know it's boring, but I think they're gonna follow the steps almost exactly. I think mm. they're gonna wait till the end of next year and then just have a video, and then it shows the basic concept, and then they'll go into depth the following year. Do so like a big event. Twenty twenty three. Yeah, like a like an event, like a direct, and then you know, and then I don't know. That's just the boring. That's just the boring Furukawa you know, uh, side of me thinking that they're not really going to get really too creative the, the uh, with question. it and, and follow what works. They're going to bring a couch out on stage again. That's still my favorite part of the the Switch reveal is they brought out a couch, <laughs> he laid on it, and, lays it, and then they carried the couch away. I always love that. What, well, then I guess that brings us to the next question is how does how does Nintendo follow up the Switch? Like what? The, what's the? Because they said this was a year ago with investors that the on next gen we are not saying right now we are still going through internal discussions on concept, timing, and etc. What what is the concept of their next system? I I've been saying this for a bit, but I do think, and I could just be a million percent wrong, and but I think they are going to try and make a, a version of the Switch that currently we we know where mm. it's dockable and portable as well. But I do think they're going to do like a next gen switch that just connects to your tv i think there is going to be a variation uh that just hey i want the box i don't care about the portability interesting so you think they would launch with a box and the switch hybrid you think they no, go no, away from the hybrid no, model I, I, I think they'll make a variation the way uh -huh. that the uh the switch light the switch light uh or yeah switch light i think they're going to do like the opposite which is like next gen switch will have a variant that is just like Hey, do you want to pay fifty dollars less so we don't put a screen on the thing? Just plug mm, it in and play it. Okay, okay. Uh, that's the thing that seems to be tripping people up right now. Is I I asked on Twitter, and I'd say eighty percent of the responses was, "I just want the Switch, but more powerful." Yeah, <laughs> so like eighty percent, like most of the response for that. And I'm like, that's kind of describing what the Switch Pro would have been, I guess. So I was trying to get a bit more creativity out of people because like i don't know if nintendo would show up and and be like it's the same thing but more powerful i kind of feel like they would have come up with something a little different or like what's the 3d for this going from the ds to the 3ds they had 3d it's more powerful system but they yeah, added that that's wrinkle. what i was gonna say is i feel like they're not necessarily I would be very surprised if like their main selling point is it's more powerful. Like, I think that's going to be like the, th that's what people are going to go on the site and look at, or maybe they'll mm -hmm. give you like some highlights, but for the most part, like people who are avid about, uh, you know, which is not everyone, not, not everybody cares how powerful the next console is going to be. It's just, can I play the games that I want to play? Um, which is power, but they don't see it as that way. Um, I, I, I'm just I'm curious where it's like if it is dockable, you know, they're gonna they're gonna make something like I don't want to say quirky, but uh, you know, with Nintendo, it's like they always have something that that's like their representation of that generation. Um, so I don't know. I I think it's smart to continue with the Switch family thinking, um, or with the Switch brand labeling, like keeping that going. Um, hopefully, it doesn't get confusing because <laughs> yeah. I feel like after a mm. while, when you have like too many of like the same. Yeah. label type things you know people when when parent i feel like parents now that we're all growing up you know it's like you know it, it's like uh kind of sort of the 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 parents not like oh the nintendo it's like no they're usually more well informed now because gamers yeah. are growing up yep. so i don't know i i think i think for me that i'm curious but also also at the same time i feel like this is like the first big change we're really gonna see since you know, like the iwata san um mindset and now that you know reggie's been gone and like all of these changes have happened um in the meantime since the switch has been out and like i feel like we haven't really seen like the next big thing now that we've had like a whole new like representation of people um so i think it's gonna be interesting i'm not nervous but I'm I feel coming. like there's a lot of there'd be a lot of pressure on Nintendo, and especially for Akawa, because this would be it's his first shoes. real launch. But yeah. to follow up, that's gonna be tough following up the Switch either way. Yeah. And you don't have two systems where one can kind of drag its feet and the other one, like their handheld, can kind of carry a bit. It's like this is it. You gotta launch this thing. It's gotta be like it's it's good it's to be, be good. safe. Yeah, it's good to be safe and it's good to follow numbers and stuff like that. But there is such thing as being too safe, if mm. that makes sense. Okay, that's so, what you're saying. That's what you're saying. There is a balance. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what the evolution would be because they've gone from the Wii U, which was tethered, 
how far could he walk away? Mm-hmm. Eight feet maybe before it starts. Ten feet before it's like, uh, it's getting a little shaky with this. Now it's you can we'll go wherever you want with it. And I'm almost thinking if they go to the position where you're connected everywhere you go with it and they figure out a way to work in yeah. some sort of mobile radio and give you a, a, a 5G connection, uh, that that's just just spitball in there maybe they go to a position where the, the wide you're right on that john yeah, yeah the... I, I think i think that you're right on what i here's what they're going to do john i think you're on the right track they're going to do the same switch right mm-hmm. more powerful and all that i think they're going to evolve the hd the hd uh rumble mm-hmm. tech i think they're going to evolve it you know to the level where sony has or past sure. that you're going to do that i think that they're going to also where well, they're going to in- fully integrate it with smartphones and stuff they're mm-hmm. going to integrate it to the point where it's not such a you know, bolted on thing that they had with the with the switch. They're gonna fully integrate it to where you're gonna be able to easily shop, easily be able to go through whatever. Cause the storefront, if you want to buy a game on there, it's much better than the than uh than going on the eShop. So I think they're gonna fully integrate uh smartphones into it mm-hmm. and then really just kind of play off of that, being like Splatnet and the different type of stuff that they do, fully integrate it completely and then try to and then the games. And then that's gonna be to me the biggest selling point is uh games is just making sure that hey if you want to play the next big mario game you're gonna have to buy this the next big pokemon game you gotta buy this so you combine that with full smartphone integration with cool hd rumble tech then maybe even you know some people throw around ideas like supplemental computing device with with the dock so having even better um you know home capabilities combined with uh, taking it on the go and really pushing that that can create a whole new atmosphere for selling something new i almost thought about eliminating the dock completely and just doing wireless hdmi where the picture just goes to your tv without having to put it into a dock and then i thought about and i said nintendo seems like the company that would try to go back to the dual screen setup with that so maybe that's not a great idea (laughs) i think the problem with that john is that hdmi needs to be a certain spec like 2.0 or or something like that right what would it require you know, there are. I, I have a crusty old television that has HDMI one. You know, mm-hmm. so I think there's a there's a be, there's got to be some barrier of entry there if you're going to do that. So I'm not sure if that's the right. Play. Why but do you I, have an HDMI one TV, MVG? Hold up, dude. It's got it's got uh, S video. It's got component. It's got like all the inputs. So I use it for retro gaming as well. It works well. You're supposed to have a it's separate TV. No TV. Separate. That, that is a separate TV. I I will oh, say that. Okay. <laughs> OJ's idea, I think of Damn, all man. the things we pitched, the thing I love the most hearing people kick around is the the idea that the dock would boost the power. That to me would be big because I don't play my my Switch undocked hardly at all. And typically when I do, it's like in 10 minute stents or something. So I think it would be to me, that's the, the biggest selling point. If the, the new Switch plays good as a handheld, but putting in the dock actually changes the experience beyond just, hey, it's your game on a TV. I think the the controllers do need to change up pretty drastically. <laughs> They've been going through a lot with the Joy Cons, and I I I've, I've looked at my my Steam Deck, and they have the the joysticks that do have the the ability to tell when you're touching the joystick. So they have sensors on top, yeah. which is really cool. And I almost wonder oh. if Nintendo could maybe integrate that and and have that as use in some of their games and maybe they take the haptic feedback a bit further and put it into uh, a more meaningful role in the triggers on the back that they work with and maybe they do have them in the analog there, there's probably a lot of things they can do when it comes to the the controller functionality because that, that is something they change up quite frequently and continue to evolve I and mean, we went from a the the wii remote to the wii u gamepad and that was a pretty big shift so uh, i do wonder what their plan would be when it comes to the controller side of things but it's 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 tough to figure out what Nintendo is going to do or what they're thinking. Um, but my 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 big thing now is I guess my criteria: more powerful system, hybrid concept, backwards compatible. Yes. Yeah, I mean I think yes. the, the the things that I I, th- I feel like are almost certain to happen is they're going to continue their partnership with Nvidia, right? So we mm-hmm. know that's a thing. We know that they're going to probably stay on ARM chips. That's not going to go away. Um, so those two things um, that we know about. So from there, what what, what is the, the next system going to look like? Well, Nintendo is known for its you know um, creativity and and its different designs and the way that they do consoles. It's not you know the traditional way mm-hmm. that um, consoles have been made and handhelds and all that. So who knows? I mean, I think you guys are onto something in that they're going to take the existing Switch 
um, model and base something around that, right? They're not going to completely pivot away from it and just have a traditional console system that you can put into your uh, entertainment center. I think it's going to be based on the Switch, but, you know, whatever that looks like, I couldn't say. I really couldn't say what it looks like. I Honestly, I thought the Pro was a thing. You know, I, I thought the Pro was, was something that was was going to happen because I felt like it was time for new hardware. But now, I mean, I, I'm really excited to see what is next because I think, you know, we're at that point now where it's like, what is this next system going to be? And hopefully we'll get some more info on that next year. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I guess the only other shot in the dark is them taking advantage of, they, they like to go back and get some old, like older technology. By the time 2024 rolls around, foldable screens will have been years old. So I, that could be something else. They have the Switch go back to kind of a clamshell design that can open up into one large screen and then it can also be docked. No, no. I've heard about foldable screen tech, but I've also heard it's still not quite robust yeah. enough. It's like, really I feel not. Like, you even look I at feel like, like if, you get, if you give that to a kid, if you give that to a seven-year-old kid yeah. or something, they're just going to mess that thing up. Yeah, so. I've heard that the hinges are really brittle. Mm. So that's the thing. It's definitely, it's one of the, I think a lot of them are made to last like 10,000 open closes, but if yeah. a kid's playing it three times a day, that may only last two years. There you go. I could see myself rage quitting a game just snapping that <laughs> Stabbing in half. Well, it's, it's even for the fact that, like, I don't know at what point what we would hit, but, like, you're always going to have a crease. You're always. Yeah. And I just feel like yeah. that would really just irk me. If, and, and, and even just from, like, an insurance standpoint, like, we mm. complain about joy joy con drift, drift like yeah, joy, yeah. joystick drift like it would be it would be a nightmare you, you know what i'm saying so i don't you know, know. I, feel, I feel like with the ds in a way they were kind of like those nokia bricks a little bit like the the ds ds's but i feel like over time like i don't know i feel like there's a difference between like two separate entities of screens versus just <clears throat> one big one where like max said it literally is like every time you open a screen you're counting down a timer <laughs> of yeah. the lifespan of that thing and you know, pe people, a gaming. Uh, Nintendo haters would call it the cringe hinge or something like, oh, bro, the cringe <laughs> hinge is just waiting to break. I guess the last question <laughs> is, do they keep, do they keep the Switch branding? Yes, they 1 million percent. They should. Yeah, they, they will. You think they're going to? I think so. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think they should. So like, yeah. this is not a Switch U? DS to 3DS, <laughs> Wii to Wii U, Switch to. But it has to be something, something. that distinguishes itself from the current, current, exactly. um, you know, lineup, right? Mm -hmm. But I, they have to keep the Switch name somewhere mm -hmm. in there okay mm -hmm. i think they're gonna put a word after switch that's longer than the word switch i think it's gonna be like switch <laughs> revolution or something something to make it where when you see the name you know that it is a different generation mm -hmm. but switch also 64 switch exactly i mean so we're all on the same page it's funny because uh people were tweeting me yesterday like isn't it weird that we're not a hundred percent that it's going to be backwards compatible we have no idea because sometimes nintendo stuff stuff for a curveball what if it doesn't have the cartridge slot like what if the next switch is digital only backwards compatible or something like well, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know why this whole backwards compatibility thing became a thing. Nintendo already put in their investor meeting, like, yeah, we're going to move over Nintendo accounts. So if you're moving over Nintendo accounts, that's pretty sure you're going to have your games on there. I don't well, see hopefully. why it wouldn't be backwards compatible. And they've done backwards compatibility, like, a lot. So I don't know. Usually, like, when people say, like, oh, I don't know if it's not going to do something, it's usually like, when they don't do it in the past, but... Like there's been tons of backwards compatibility. Well, no, but but that's the thing is that you know, the we we yeah. we you did it, you know. That's the switch well, didn't. That was a whole format game. change, though. Like, hold on, that was a well, whole no, like and, going and that's, from, yeah, that's you know? a, But that's my point, though, is that are we going to keep having teeny tiny cartridges the new console? I would bet not. I feel like you can't have teeny tiny cartridges if the games are supposed to be bigger and better. I think they're going to use cartridges again. I think they're going to use cartridges again, and I think they're going to actually get bigger sizes on the cartridges. We still never got, uh, what was it, 64 gigabyte, even though there's been rumors and stuff that nope. there's 64, never we still never, never, we never got those. So, I mean, they need to, and that's one of the things that I said, they need to make sure that they find a way to get those cartridge prices down and get bigger spaces on those. Like, so mm. hopefully they've been working on that. There's a few games that are 32, um, but I don't see them moving over to, to like, 
Blu-ray format or to, but I don't, I don't yeah, see I don't, them doing I don't think yeah. they're going to discs. I just think it'd be a I'm different like priority. Like I'm thinking my analogy is like a uh, floppy disks to zip drive. I think it's going to be something that's just they, a new cartridge. They kind of do what they did with the 3DS where the slot took 3DS games, but it could also take DS games. So they could do the, yeah. the new switch up that comes out yeah. and then they have, uh, you know, some new cartridge that goes in, but it still kind of fits the old one just right. So that's all I could think of. If they want to take, Physical games, by the way, into potentially 2030 or 2031 um, when we're hearing that there's like a 70 some odd percent break of just digital to physical now. So yeah. even right, like the buy and VGS right? has to go right now. Yeah. Buy I got to I got to jump oh, off. Buy everyone. Uh, yeah, have a have a great new year and uh, we'll catch up next week. Happy Bye New month. Year. See Happy you next year. year. Bye. All right. Very good. Very good. Only the cool people are here now. <laughs> also, I hope they get rid. Of, I hope they work to get rid of the load screens with the next switch. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. getting used to that now. Where I see a load screen, I'm like, oh, that's right, I forgot about these things. <laughs> I'm playing a bunch of Need for Speed Unbound, and everything is instant in that game. Yeah. And so when you leave the garage, it actually always trips me out because it says like, "Are you ready to start the race?" Yes, and it, you're just on the street, and I'm always like, whoa. So then when I go back to playing, because I'm currently replaying Breath of the Wild, it's weird. Breath of the Wild doesn't have long load times, but there's definitely some load times, and you feel it. Yeah, that that'd be the nice thing too. Is when they, I assume they'll work uh, away from that. So. Yeah, the the cartridges would have to be like like higher capacities, like the change of something, right? Like it'd have to be like faster just to be able to get through it if they're going to do that. Because like I know like N64 had load times, but it was pretty fast back in yeah, the day, almost instant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like if, if they can evolve that that'd be like to me what they need to definitely get um definitely get done but even like with the ds the ds like the gba to ds i mean they just man they put a whole there was two there was right they put like a whole there, yeah. <laughs> yeah they put a whole game boy advance slot so i'm i'm guessing that mm -hmm. they they can't really afford to not have it has to switch it has to have yeah. full 100 percent backward well it's not going to work with labo but 99.8 percent backwards compatibility yeah. it has to be there I yeah think. what and that's what o oj's phrasing there i think is perfect is that they can't afford to not be backwards compatible after selling you know a hundred million switches and a billion yeah. games you have to freaking have those games work on the new system because if you get new people you want them to be able to have access to all of those games to be able to well, buy you want you also want a reason for sometimes people want to be able to buy in at a, a lower price point and then mm -hmm. upgrade um mm -hmm. or maybe they're mm -hmm. like maybe i'm just gonna wait for tax season or mm -hmm. you know like my birthday or something and so you you want to be able to get them in um it's kind of like the switch light you know like for some people i i still don't fully understand why they didn't just like sell the switch at a cheaper rate without the dock um mm -hmm. option like they did they did that in japan mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken right like yeah. you just buy they the did. switch out it doesn't right. have controllers either though right Isn't it just the screen or something weird I um you can I... buy it in a variation you can buy it without control without the joy cons you can buy it with it was like a completely it's like, like a build your own yeah. 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 yeah build your own type of deal it wasn't in stores though it wasn't like buy this switch that's the regular switch without like you had to do it through like their website mm -hmm. so oh. it was a very small scale type of deal oh, okay um, yeah. maybe I thought it was bigger than it was. I just feel like there's a lot of like missed opportunities they could have done too. Cause even just think about like them making it to where you could like a la carte specific joy cons, like mm -hmm. joy con combinations mm -hmm. or, you know, bring out way more different types of additions or, or, you know, just the different shells and stuff like that. I really feel like they missed out on it, yeah, but like the Xbox not... controller lab. Yeah, I, I just I think that they're maybe maybe they're just, you know, trying to keep their heads down and like focus again with what the numbers are doing and not doing too much. Um, but yeah, you do want to get people in on that lower price point is where I was going. So like not having I, I think people want to just be prepared that they're going to be a greedy corporation and not have backwards compatible or make it an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. um to kind of uh you know move things on from one console to the another because i mean from the wii u to the switch it was pretty much like a fresh buy anybody who had a wii u you know like mario kart or hyrule warriors or xenoblade of some sort uh, you know it's like you had to buy it all again so i think some people even though that's like a smaller number compared to the switch numbers i think some people are just prepared for nintendo to be a greedy corporation and be like oh well now we believe yes. in generations. They could Sorry. sell you the yes. 4K is, version of Mario Odyssey then. This, yeah, yeah, this is just so much better that, you know, we feel like it would be a better experience just to have it tailored towards a new generation versus it ever be available to be 
playable properly oh, that, for your enjoyment if, on the old system if and that, it's like if that new system is not backwards <sighs> battle it's gonna be a wild day online yeah i, I don't know <laughs> I, that's gonna I mean, be the I, I would be very sad very surprised so hard um, for him to go on the straight face probably <laughs> Yeah, I probably would be off the internet for like a good month. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I don't, people would just be foaming at the mouth. I don't, I mean, to me, if you want to be a greedy corporation, you allow people to be able to buy as many games as possible right there at the beginning and not have to say, oh, well, now you got to take the time to pour all that stuff over and wait because you got to wait to get that money. They're going to, they're not going to have all that Switch stuff available for people to buy right away. Look how long it took mm. to get all the. So, I mean, to me, if you want to be greedy, you, you you put backwards compatibility in there and then people can just be able to have a huge library to well, buy whatever the hell they want like that sell a next gen patch or some shit like yeah, your game I, I mean, works ten dollars to make it look good i mean yeah i mean i don't know if nintendo's gonna do that but i mean yeah maybe they, maybe they're they shaking do. hands with nintendo <laughs> but, yeah but i don't think nintendo's gonna have that technology i don't think they're gonna do pat like performance patches mm. or stuff i don't think they're gonna do any of that i think that if it works uh, better if they're just, mm. It's just going to work better, and they're just going to go from there. If you, I mean, if you want to be a greedy corporation, you take the system's core functionality of 5G, you tie it to one company, and you make it go through Nintendo Online subscriptions. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! If you start bringing <laughs> in welcome, like Nintendo. 5G and stuff like that, connected uh, everywhere. That's all. That's like, how would you actually like make that work properly? Who knows? <laughs> because then you got to start getting carriers yep. involved. Yeah. That's why you pick one, and... you tie it to Nintendo Switch Online, and you just have packages set up. But, but freaking you live in podunk nowhere you know what yeah. i mean like nintendo switch just for everyone it'd be easier if they just sold it unlocked like, and it takes whatever sim card world. you have but didn't, it, who did, didn't like sony do sony something tried. like that yeah the vita yeah the, v, the, the I, psp I, or vita one of those yeah, i already hate it when they do it with watches you know what i mean where it's yeah. like you have the bluetooth version of the watch but then you gotta buy you gotta go a completely separate different like uh I, we were looking for freaking what was it like, i was like shopping for an apple watch and i didn't know that like if you just go into like a t-mobile or verizon or something like you can only get the 5g version or like the service is there and then if you want like a bluetooth you mm. go to a completely different store. I didn't know that. I, That's literally, very dumb. Literally, I literally did not know that. Like, they don't just carry the Bluetooth versions, even though it would make them money. It's just, it, it, I think it would just cause so much mm. mass confusion. Be a lot of confusion yeah. Not the, yet. Not the only yet. reason I think that they might do it is, I mean, because I, I see OJ's tweets talking about the fact that, like, the, the Switch is just such a dominant powerhouse in Japan and Japan has pretty much 100% cell phone coverage. So if they did partner yeah. and start to make a service, mm. especially because imagine if it was $20 a month or something, I do feel like there were Nintendo well, fans who'd be mobile $20 market a month. is incredibly popular in Japan. So yeah, that's... Yeah. I'm sorry, did you say $20 a month? People can so, barely handle $20 a year. I know, but I'm saying like <laughs> for like, if there is a premium version of like now, it, now you can connect and play it anywhere and it'll work now my splatoon games won't dc yeah exactly okay. yeah right True. i tried to play splatoon on christmas because i was just sitting on my butt by myself i played six games all six games disconnected all six serious? games crashed and i just stopped damn mm. man it's rough buddy let me go over here to discord question this is from wilkin wilkin says i feel like the wii u's 10th 10 year anniversary went by silently fondest wii u memories uh <sighs> trading it in <laughs> <laughs> Um, nobody had it. That's why it went by quietly. Nobody had the system. Like, yeah. so old. Like, um, do we celebrate Sega Saturn's anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody did it. Let's go by quietly too. <laughs> I, I think I think the initial like concept of like setting setting up a new console is always fun because you have like that that unwavering kind of like hope of like oh there's gonna be like so much to come for this new console oh, it kind of brings you back <laughs> yeah you know this poor poor 2013 click was 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 very very naive i mean i did put a lot of hours into mario kart 8 you know when it was new um and then you know like hyrule warriors and stuff and 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 nintendo land was fun i actually we had like parties um like for thanksgiving and stuff and everybody coming over and trying like all the different modes it was quirky it was new it was unique and people enjoyed it but then it's like obviously that fades off so i'd say the initial beginnings of having the console was the sweetest part but then you quickly realize they're not doing anything else with this console yeah. okay i, think I, I only played smash brothers i played i beat mm. bayonetta i beat 
whatever the Kirby game was and Yoshi's. Like, I feel like I beat a bunch of Wii was U it games. Epic Yarn or something? Epic Yarn. I feel like I beat a bunch of Wii U games in like a day and I just mm. never played them again except for Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers is the only game that I actually like sat down and played long term. Smash, Mario Kart. Again, like I said, Nintendo Land. They had, they had some fun some fun modes. I really like the, what was it, like the, the Metroid one? The Zelda one was fun. I've Smash seen Brothers that. way too I've, much. It's a lot of Smash Brothers. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I played a lot of. I just remember playing Smash and playing when, when, when Splatoon first came out. I thought that was like super cool. So yeah. that was like a good memory of playing Splatoon. Did um, not play the first one. Yeah, I, I remember you, you said that you didn't. You, didn't which is it. which is so funny that you didn't play it. I miss considering how big of a fan, considering how big I, of a fan you are of the I, series. People, people, literally, they they call me like the biggest fangirl of Nintendo, and I was like, I was one of those people where I was like. Splatoon looks cute. It looks quirky. It looks like kids will have fun. And I like literally, uh, he was like two or three years older than me. He's like, yo, you gotta get Splatoon so we can like play. He was one of my coworkers and he was like an avid gamer. And I was just like, you know, that's really cute. I wouldn't take you as someone who likes a game like Splatoon, bro. I, I, I eat those words. I, I regret saying that to him. And I had to tell him like, yo, I'm sorry for judging you. Cause I love Splatoon now. So it's from Dan says, has anyone had the chance to check out sports story yet? I checked yeah. it out some. Yeah. I, there was, there's some weird stuff going on with the game. I, I, they apparently they're working to patch some of it, but there's some, for some reason, yeah. tennis doesn't count points. Right. I noticed that that was a weird I, one. <laughs> that floaty game at the beginning yeah. is, did you play that floaty game at the beginning? Like yeah. where you're on like the, what is that thing? I, I don't, there's some weird stuttering going on with the game too. They're apparently they're working to fix it. So I, I think patches have been rolling out or they're about to, but uh, I, I'm probably going to end up beating it before they even get the patches out. So I'm, I'm going to yeah, keep just, playing I just, it. I like I the, I still playing. like the visual aesthetic of it. it. You know, I love golf story. I like the way this one looks. Uh, there's just, some odd stuff going on in the game that they got to work out. Yeah, but. I, yeah. I, I just stopped playing it. It's it's really good though. Like it, it's fun. It's you tee off anywhere. It's still they've got a bunch mm -hmm. of cool mini games and stuff in there. Like it's it's the same golf story, but even better. Just some weird glitches here and there. But it's still fun. Some of them are actually humorous. Like one time I was invincible. Like I was just like I was, or not invincible. But I was just like I just like disappeared, but I can still move around. Like you still see like the camera invincible moving yeah. but <laughs> yeah but i'm like oh okay th this is this is actually kind of cool <laughs> <laughs> jeff says my backlit game boy advance battery indicator light keeps going from green to red to red to green even with a new battery what do i need to do to make the battery indicator accurate well it can also be it's not reading the battery itself correctly so if you bought a third party battery it might be struggling with that I i've seen that one before uh, and it might just be the brand or the quality of it. Otherwise, the context might not be reading it right either. So you may have to, if you look inside of the Game Boy Advance SP, sometimes there's little gold pins or dirty. Water can get in there, moisture, those kinds of things. But I would check with a higher quality battery, potentially, depending on where you got it from, and then kind of go from there. Let's, let's talk briefly, we'll reflect briefly on 2022 for games, since this is the last podcast of... 2022 and uh, i mean we i went back through and i was realizing there are some games that came out that i forgot they came out i mentioned legends arceus feels like that was way longer ago than the beginning of mm -hmm. 2022 because i was going by by month right so arceus was january 28th uh windjammers 2 was actually in there too that was that was a good one uh, and then up to february of course we had like horizon forbidden west how did we end up how do we end up feeling about the entire year of 2022 as a whole? I I liked it, but it felt very PlayStation heavy. It felt like PlayStation had Ragnarok between PlayStation and, and Xbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah. Just... And uh, it was it was bizarre. I feel like I, it's just weird that it felt like Xbox did nothing, whereas I put so many hours into Gran Turismo and. I don't know. And I mean, Elden Ring coming out. I still think Elden Ring might be one of my favorite games ever in my entire life. So it's weird that that came out in February. Question heavy as in just third party games, like everything combined. No, no, no. I mean, just in the fact that we got uh, Last of Us Part One remake, a giant air quotes remake. Then we got uh, uh, was Ghostwire. Ghostwire was the end of last year, right? Oh God, I'm, I'm don't 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 listen to me. Critics making the face like I'm saying stupid shit. So no, no ignore no, me. Ignore I don't me. Even remember this whole year's been a no. Ghost, Ghostwire was this year. Yeah, go, yeah Ghostwire. Go, Ghostwire, yeah. which is exclusive, but is done by Microsoft. It just felt like there was like there was like five big exclusive PlayStation exclusives this year. 
which is weird. I feel like that's the heaviest year they've had for exclusives. Oh, okay. For, for Sony in terms of the overall exclusives in a year. Yeah. Uh, like even stray and stuff, you know? Okay. Because we did have Nintendo had, let's see, they had in 2022 Arcea legend of Ar legends, Arceus. They had, they announced their booster course pass the first wave Kirby forgotten <laughs> land. They had switched sports, Mario strikers, fire Emblem warriors, Sunbreak for Monster Hunter, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, Kirby's Dream Buffet, Splatoon 3, Mario Rabbit, Sparks of Hope, Bayonetta 3, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh, oh you forgot the one of the goats, Triangle Strategy. Triangle Strategy, that's in there. Oh my god. True. Triangle Strategy is incredible. Triangle Strategy is in there, yep. Okay, there we go. Got my, got my cavity right there. I love Triangle Strategy. I love Strategy. So, like, Nintendo Nintendo was, was releasing pretty consistently throughout the year. I understand. I, I think I see people who are looking for that Zelda or Mario release, but they still had a they still had a lot of good stuff in here throughout the throughout 2022. And you just named a bunch of stuff that Sony had, and I, Microsoft was kind of the odd one out for the year. So that's one of the reasons I do look at. I, I do now that I really look back on it, I do still see 2022 as kind of a down year across the board, just because we didn't have participation really from Microsoft's first party studios. Um, but. 2022 yeah. was a, it, it was all right. It was, I, I kind of thought as we were hearing more and more about how development was struggling in 2021, that 2022 was going to be a year that just really suffered. And now that I'm looking back on it, I feel like I had actually quite a bit to play throughout the entire year. Mm -hmm. I had too much to play. Yeah. I, was, I still have a bunch of games that I haven't finished that I got. I just got Horizon not too long ago. I still got to go through all of God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. I still have. Oh my like, god, I got so many games to play. I still got to go. I still got to finish Mario Plus Rabbids. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. still. Man, I've what, got. What else could have come out for it to feel like a complete year? Like Zelda. Zelda, it, yeah. Well, I think. Yeah. Let, let me give you. If if Starfield, had, there would be no place for if it. If Starfield and Redfall released this year, I feel like it would have been a more complete 2022 because we would have, have big Microsoft. releases from Microsoft. I, yeah. I think. Yeah. May, maybe on paper, but I feel like when you're actually in the ad, unless unless you are a creator whose job is to get through a game as fast as possible oh, yeah, or no. get through a certain amount to review it, like I, I just feel like, especially towards the end of, ends of the year, maybe in the middle, but I don't know. I, I feel like it really depends because like if you have like a game like Call of Duty or Splatoon or Overwatch Two or something come out. Like those are games that it's not just like a one and done right. or like you platinum and done. That's something that is hundreds, if not thousands of hours that people commit to. And then if they're also playing single players on top of that, like that's a lot like you, your schedule is of free time is kind of like booked up for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like between, you know, um, Pokemon, Pokemons, Pokemans. The, the multiple, yeah. Between you having multiple of those games coming out, then you have Splatoon, and I'm just thinking like even just with Nintendo Xenoblade, like Bayonetta. you, you Bayonetta. Like uh, for me, you know, it's kind of one of those things. As someone who gets to play, well, when I have the opportunity to play games, it's like there was almost something to do every day, and I still have a backlog this year. So I, I really think it just comes down to personal preference. For some people, if they're only on that multiplayer scheme, maybe they were satisfied. For some people, if it's only for playstation or only for nintendo but i feel like if you're getting the opportunity to kind of ingest everything um it was a really it was a really packed year maybe you think maybe people are just oversaturated and they found their niche that's fine mm -hmm. but we also had, what was it live alive came out this year yeah too? it yep. came out yeah um, that was an ex another exclusive you just mentioned yeah. bayonetta 3 that, that wrapped the year yeah. with uh with mario rabbits yeah well i, I th think i think there was a lot i just think um I think sometimes people kind of get caught up in like the big highlights that there are actually are a lot of things that did come out that maybe they would like if they gave it a chance or maybe they just completely forgot about it. Like when people ask like what games came out this year or like 2017, what games came out in 2017? I literally had to Google it. And I'm like, there's so many games that came out that don't even feel like it was 2017, but I literally have to look up a list mm. to try to remember everything. <laughs> Well, how about you know? How about we how about we go through these two questions for 2022 to kind of reflect and finish up? What's our let's start with what's our biggest surprise of 2022? I I still have to say Elden Ring because I mean okay. I'm a From Software fan, so I thought it would be good, 
But I mean, it just, it blew me away. It goes on and on and on from different zones and different combat styles and different specializations and all the hidden stuff and the PvP arena that just got dropped for free a couple weeks ago. Mm. Elden Ring is probably like, maybe my second or third favorite game of all time, like right okay. beneath Final Fantasy VII. And it's just one of those things that like, it feels like it feels like when someone's making a meal and you're watching them make the meal and you're like, that's going to be good. And then you eat it and it's your favorite meal of all time. It's like, how the hell is this so freaking good? That's how I feel about Elden Ring. I'm going to I'm gonna go with, for biggest surprise, I think I'm going to go with High on Life only because I was not expecting anything from it. And it was actually enjoyable. It was, but I mean, there's a better, a lot of, many, many other better games on this list. But I already kind of knew that most of them would be pretty good. And then I'm looking at High on Life, and I thought it was just going to be a kind of a throwaway experience. And it was fun. It was they had some genuinely interesting ideas in there, and uh, I'm interested in what they do next. So I'll, I'll I'll stick with High on Life for my my biggest surprise of 2022. For me, I, dude, I'm not into Warriors games too much. I'll play them, but, you know, I'm not into them. But Fire Emblem Warriors, it being what it actually ended up turning out being, which was, like, in many ways better than Three Houses in so many aspects. Not everything overall. Uh, not the gameplay and everything, but some of the mechanics they took from Three Houses and actually made them fun and not tedious and not activity points and not all this weird stuff that Three Houses has that keeps you pushing forward. So I was thoroughly surprised at how good Fire Emblem Warriors was. I think it's the best rated one, too. I think it's like 80 mm-hmm. something, which is Warriors games never get that high. So I was actually Three surprised Hopes that it did the, come out this year, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, Three Hopes came out. It, the Shit. problem with Three Hopes is be- it came out while we were going to too many games. Yep. So yeah. I had to, so I couldn't like just play it right away. I had to wait yeah. for a while and I wasn't really like super excited to really get into it anyway, just because Fire Emblem Warriors was okay for me, but it wasn't like mm-hmm. anything like, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, the story was incredible too. It was really good. Like what if story, if Byleth was like the bad guy. So it was like, that was, it was just dope seeing that, you know? So for me, that was probably my biggest surprise. Um, okay. So yeah, that's probably my biggest surprise for me. We got click. Anything mm-hmm. off the top of your head? No, nah, I think personally for me, 2022 has just been the year of survival. So okay. <laughs> um, I, th- I think for me, the highlights and also lo- low lights uh, has been just watching everybody like um, fall in love with different types of games. Like the amount of people who picked up Elden Ring who've never played a Souls type game. Um, like seeing them be like, you know, I've never tried a game like this and I love it and like seeing the screenshots and the posts like i think people or like xenoblade a lot of people picked up three because they're like do i need to play one and two and then people were like no so then they try it and like whoa i love this and now they're good i think for me it's just vicariously living through other people Mm -hmm. um so yeah 2022 tested me i think a lot in like my personal (laughs) life so i've been like experiencing the highlights through other people so you know like max like given that analogy of of you know like the food being prepared and then it's actually a satisfying meal and it's like this is something that i want to make for other people or Mm -hmm. like have other people enjoy like that's that's the cool shit you know what i mean like that's the highlight for me because maybe it's super cheesy but yay gamers you know like we're we we've been eating well we've taken some taking some crappy dumps but we've we've been eating well so that's a nice positive message from click now let's talk about the game that disappointed us the most (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, well, one, one final positive thing man it's been fun specifically watching everybody love live alive because i love that and i played the original version man that game i felt like twitter especially just fell in love with the idea of these like eight separate stories mm-hmm. from different time periods and stuff god that game was good all right 2022 what's our we just talked about our biggest surprise was what's our biggest disappointment for me callisto like even though Still callisto, callisto okay. was not the worst mm-hmm. game okay. i I rebeat it uh, a couple of days ago. I fully played through it again. And uh, I think it gave me a, an even deeper understanding of, of how bad it is, of that it's beautiful and it's interesting. But the story is so, I mean, it's one of the worst video game stories. The I've ending ever seen. didn't it's, really do it that, for me, unfortunately. It makes no sense. Like, it's like, we're the super zombie Illuminati and you're going to be our new super zombie. And then it just ends. Like, what the hell does that even mean? Okay, so Callisto is your, okay, okay. For, uh, for me uh, for me pokemon like okay. i felt that mm. pokemon it's so good but then it's all so bad like the battles are incredible the pokemon are great the structure is fantastic and there's so many good things about the game it's actually my favorite new gen pokemon game 
and since the fifth generation but then the performance is just also like man it's hard to get through some of the parts imagine if they just had it where it was just normal just like the other pokemon games like it would have been even the performance of sword and shield would have been uh, just so much better so it's my <laughs> it's like one of my favorites it's fun it's it's in, it, I, but i like it but then it's also disappointing because of man this could have been so much better and not went through all the situation if they would have been able to just uh get it right from the launch mm. so yeah it's my disappointing but then it's also my favorite new gen game since the fifth <laughs> The new gen Pokemon game since the fifth gen, or since black and white. There mm -hmm. you go. Since since black and white, or since Diamond and Pearl fourth and fifth gen. So it's like, oh man, it's great, but then also it's really disappointing because of the reasons that I listed. I had a bunch on my list, but I think I'm gonna go. <laughs> I did. I think I, I think I gotta stick with Mario Strikers, though. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it really just comes yeah. down to the potential and the, the. I mean, that might be one of the biggest fumbles I've ever seen. Because it's just, if you just have four people playing together in a room, matchmaking, man, that'd be a fun game just to kill some time with. But you can't do it. So that's the, that it, it's so close. It's it's right there. And I was just, I, I had a lot of high expectations for next level games because they, I mean, Luigi's Mansion Three is an awesome title. That still I think is one of the best looking games on the Switch. And then they go from that, and then they drop Mario Strikers. That's was lacking content, but was just missing the fundamentals for. A multiplayer game that that's what they relied on so uh, unfortunate because i they've done their last patch i don't think they're going to figure it out and i think they're going to move on from it so i think what we have now is sort of it unless they surprise people with a paid battle pass but you can't put the fundamental core fundamental of the multiplayer where you can play with three other people in matchmaking behind a paid dlc so i think that's just kind of the way the game's going to be unfortunate yep. They've only had like what, like one or two updates too, right? I mean, uh, in the meantime, in terms of like content updates, yeah, like characters and maps. I think they stuff. had two, but they released two each update. So they've had, I think they've had four, and then they released some like some stages and some like extra gear and stuff like. So I think it's it's been a variety of things, but it's just been it's been spaced out. At least they said that they're done for this year. They, I don't think that they said they're done overall, from what I remember. But I think this year they're done. They might add some more stuff, but I'm not 100 percent sure what their uh, messaging was with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that'd be the nice thing if they came back and did it. But I, I'm kind of thinking next levels on to the next thing. So unfortunately, that game, it looks so lacking in features. I'll be honest. If I had a free copy of Mario Strikers, I probably still wouldn't play it. It just looked so bare bones. That's oh, fun. To me. It, the game's fun. I like the concept that they had. I like some of the stuff they added with the ball control and shot selection and mm -hmm. all this. So it's there. There is legit strategy you can have. Uh, and I think they even patched the goalie so they weren't so just bad yeah. at everything. Yeah, they did, <laughs> they boom, they did patch boom boom. I actually played it a little, not too long ago. I did play it again local and like local it's incredible like so if you got buddies around just playing local it's dope but the online play like you said john was definitely lacking but yeah local play is incredible if you have friends i don't have any friends to play it with normally you can, so that's why if I'm you can get four time. people into a room yeah. you can have two switch systems well if two people can be one somewhere two people can be somewhere else and you can get two people on each switch then you can do the matchmaking thing it's just you can't connect four switch systems that's the part that I like is weird I think you can even do like eight players like local or some type of crazy thing. Like you can do eight. Yeah, local. It's like oh cool. If you get everybody there, it's great. But yeah, if they could have replicated that online, that would have been the, um, been the ideal thing. Set up yeah, a whole that would have been it. Do the whole yeah, that stuff. would have been it because yeah. you know local. I played it with four people and we were like, Bro, yo, this is this is Evan, lit. We had Evan make jerseys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had we had a tangible uh, uh, stuff to we go were... along with it. <laughs> We wore those jerseys to too many games, bro. Yeah. Like, we were so excited that weekend. Uh, well, there you go. I just remember when Nate and I tried the beta and we signed in and we were like, there are going to be four people in here when this game comes out, right? Like, we're that's going to be a thing. And then Nate was like, I don't know. And then that was it. So, yeah, there you have it. Do you have any disappointing stuff, Click? Real life Death Stranding, um, any of that stuff. Real life Death Stranding. <laughs> I mean, other than literally all my belongings getting stolen or broken, that would be um, disappointing. Yes. No, I, I do. I probably do have to say Strikers because I, I, I was, I was incredibly excited for that when they first kind of just showed the trailer, um, and then there was just so much of nothing. So, mm. um, again, I, I, like it's kind of like what. Uh, what uh oj was saying about you know like pokemon it's like 
what works works but there's so much that also doesn't work that it kind of is like could have been just, more it's yeah 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 at least at least mario strikers runs good it does work yeah. well i will say that it runs well i so like again i told nintendo like thank you but no thank you for a copy of pokemon and that was just mainly because i it just didn't seem that intriguing to me mm. like to get into right now with all the other games that i had on my list and then to also find out it just wasn't running like it ended up being fun but it wasn't running i just yeah that was yeah, it's to me it was like yes. how did this even get approved yeah because you, they needed to know? get because of money they wanted yeah. to get the game because they wanted to get the game out see, animes launching in april money getting back to like that 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 backwards combat that's why it's like when when people are like i can't believe you would think that they wouldn't do backwards combat i'm like yeah but they also like let pokemon come through the way that it did so yeah. i i'm not i'm not I'm not going to be surprised at people who think that they're just going to push something out on you and expect you to be okay with it. Maybe Pokemon will run well then. The new Switch. I know, right? I still, I was, I was going into that one town with the big windmill. The worst shot in all of Pokemon is when you come over that hill to the town with the windmill and all the sunflowers. Uh, and the, cause it's and the windmill, like two frames, it li- yeah. yeah, it literally runs at two FPS. It looks yeah. so weird. It's like, how, what the hell? That is a game I mean, that I will probably put in the, <laughs> the new Switch the first time if everything is solid. Yeah. Need, score just to see. No, to they fair. need to fix it. Like, they need yeah. to, yeah. they can do better with the current Switch. I don't think that should just be, oh, well, they need that's, a new Switch for it. Like That's what I was about to ask is, do we even feel like they properly use the potential of the current Switch to where no. if something I, I can't more imagine powerful, they did, no. it wouldn't be just not, as... Not even, no, not we're going to brute force this thing. We're going to get the this, this Switch up and it's going to be, you know, four or five times more powerful and we're going to get that windmill to 15 frames. And oh considering God. how considering how Xenoblade turned out, Xenoblade Chronicles Three turned out with the with a bunch of enemies just roaming around. I mean, yeah, you can't catch them and all that. Get someone but, to help, Game Freak man. You know, yeah. bring bring someone else in to help. It, just, it doesn't even make sense. Like I put so many hours into that game, and I'm just every single time you're ever going through an environment, you're like, what the hell? Yeah. Time for Game Freak to buy a support studio. Yeah. Hire some people, damn it. Cross Slash asks, most people would say that the top two games of the year are Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok. If you agree, what would you say is the third best game of the year? And if you disagree, what's your top three? I would go Elden Ring, God of War, and then Xenoblade. That'd be my top three. Mm. In that order. I've, I've come around on God of War to where I am seeing it as more of a PS4 game. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am right now with those top three. For me. I'm looking at my own top ten list here. I edited this a couple weeks ago. Let me see what I put as my three. Mine were uh, mine were Zeno, Zeno, Triangle, Bayo for me. Um, I haven't finished God of War Ragnarok, so I can't necessarily say it's one. But it's it's in my top. It'd probably be in my top ten. I have played like ten hours. Uh, of it was God close of War for me between the others. Horizon and 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 uh, and Zeno. It was like I, right I between the two. I haven't played enough of Horizon. I start. I, I have too many. I have too many games to play. <laughs> there's just there's just too many games to play, man. Horizon is so, one. Of, Horizon is one of those games, man, where it's like you're enjoying playing it. You're enjoying doing game. the quests, yeah. but the story just. Uh yeah. The the story is. I they're trying to tell this this interweaving narrative, and you really have to kind of you seek out more information second, you can tell it's the second yeah. of a trilogy though yeah you know what i mean yeah like that's the only thing setting up for that third one you gotta get to the end and you're like oh time. really <laughs> oh yeah. yeah well and that's what i think is i kind of liked the story especially because the acting is so good until that last like last five part. hours and then all yep. of a sudden you're like this does they literally get like a magic tire to like diffuse god <laughs> like what the hell does this even mean <laughs> Uh, oh, so I put just... for my number three, I put uh, Shredder's Revenge, but I okay. also got to say for me, Horizon Forbidden mm-hmm. West is sure. really up there. I just Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah, it's exactly. It's so beautiful, mm-hmm. especially I have this this clip of gameplay I put into videos sometimes where I hacked one of those hawks and I flew super, super high up and I jumped off and I just parachuted all the way down to the ground with your laser parachute at night. So it's just like flickering Blowing. off like everything. It's like, oh, my gosh, it's incredible. Yeah. And then finally, Dark B. Andy asks, what was the biggest blunder that happened this year that impacts you in gaming? Ignore the Microsoft Activision buyout. Biggest blunder. Oh, it's Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that, that was a, that's the fumble of the year right there. Yeah, that, that, that was some, I mean, there was a lot of talk around Pokemon when that whole thing happened with the performance Which issues. Which is crazy the game. because like they're not financially fumbling. <laughs> 
no yeah, no no but i just mean the not performance getting punished for it was or yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. actually it's one of the most embarrassing things i've seen from it's nintendo like, and like i mean you can you can be a, and they're you just can, like we don't care you can be a team like yeah. the raiders and make money but then you still have to go out and put you know be the raiders so <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> the, 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 the cowboys they, they're the most valuable franchise in like the world i think and they've they're had just some seasons. dude they have it they They're haven't freaking leaders, made a. They haven't made a freaking playoff. They haven't made a damn. Uh, uh, they haven't made a uh, Super Bowl they have a since TV 25 show, years. They have a TV show. That's why. Well, they don't have a TV show anymore. Well, they did. I think yeah, that was stupid. It was a stupid TV show, though. I think that the Pokemon, mm -hmm. the Pokemon fumble is so interesting, and I think it's going to be talked about for a long time because in gaming, typically, if you fumble a game. It's also a bag fumble. Like it bombs so hard that you lost yeah. money. I don't think I've ever seen a game that everybody universally says sucks, but sold 20 million. Didn't it sell? I mean, it's already it sold like 10 million in three yeah. days or something in Psycho, right? That, that's a little bit of the Twitter bubble, though, because there's people that say that on Twitter and Digital Foundry people. Then there's people that are the hardcore Pokemaniacs. Like the Austin John plays, like, this yeah. is my favorite game ever. And like uh, Philly Beats and these guys that just love the game for what it does. So yeah. there's definitely a, a two parallel mm -hmm. universe there where there are Pokemon fans that are saying, no, nah, this game is incredible from a battling standpoint, yep. from all of that, and from what you can do. And then the people that just say, oh, well, it doesn't run good. I hate it. It doesn't run good enough for me. So there's definitely the multiplayer Pokemon fans that say it's incredible than the people that are like, most people in the Twitter sphere, right? Um, so there is there is that. So I mean, yeah. it's not universally hated. There's a lot of people that really like the game, the content in terms of like if you watch like people talking about it, like you see like the shiny hunting. People are watching yeah. this crap. Like it, it's just it's blown up, and it's still mm -hmm. to this point, it's going more the terror raids. Dude, I think Philly Beats had like six thousand people watching his terror raid, like Charizard terror raid. Six thousand people watching that. That's that's nuts. You know, like five or six thousand people watching that. I mean, you would have never saw that with Sword and Shield. You know? like, yeah, but imagine, it's like... I think um, imagine how how much more it probably could have reached if it just ran the way it needed to. I think that's yeah. the big thing. Is like it's good, but it could be better. Like it's the it, best it, ever for Pokemon. So. Well, te I mean, technically, it's the worst rated Pokemon <laughs> game ever released to like mainline. No, I'm, so I'm saying like, like both in terms ends of its of the spectrum. Yeah, in terms in terms, of yeah, it's the worst sales. rated. So that's where it's like Dreamcast guys yeah. saying, yeah, like, oh, this sucks, and I agree with that. But then it's also with Pokemon fans and people that are, mm -hmm. it's like the greatest thing ever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's the best. It's the fastest selling Pokemon game, and right now it's actually in Japan. It outsold the entirety of Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's it, I, and I'm, that that's crazy. Like, which has been it, out for a while. Yeah, which has been out for years, and it outsold it yeah. in its entire. It sold another three hundred and like fifty thousand copies in Japan yep. this past week. Like it's just, it, it's so, the parallel universe of this game is yeah. I've never seen it in my life. It's like yeah, yeah. you're right, Jim. Guys, it sucks. People say that oh, yeah. I, I well, have my issues, but then it's like damn, does everybody loves well, it too? I mean, it, it shows how good the gameplay is. I've played way so many hours of it, and a, a bunch of my real life friends have been playing it. Uh, some of my friends that are like office workers love it because you can just play it on the lunch break. You're like, yeah, this game looks terrible, and I'm like 800 hours into it. That's why it's so disappointing. That's why I put it as my most so, disappointing. That's so funny to think about though. Like, there's literally people being like, this girl pisses me off for a lot so well, much. Fuck. Well, one of my, yes, yeah. my one of my friends rage quit the that's other it. day because they found out that Pokemon spawn in the walls. They've been shiny hunting and they clipped the camera through the wall and they saw like 50 Pokemon sitting behind <laughs> a wall and they were like, That's not real. What am I doing with my fucking time? <laughs> well, that's uh that's our episode for New Year's Eve. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'll have everyone's links down in the description for their channels. Make sure you check them out. We got Player Essence OJ. We got Dreamcast Guy. We got Misclick all down below. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back next Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time, for our first live show of the new year. 2023 is here, so I think we've got a lot to look forward to this, this upcoming year. Excited for it. We'll see you guys then.